talk about absolute values as a piecewise function. Now, what does piecewise mean? It means there's more than one piece. That really is what it means. So the absolute value function, when x is negative, is y is equal to negative x. And when x is positive, is equal to y equals x. So we will write this as f of x is equal to the absolute value of x is equal to, and then we'll do these brackets, and we'll have two rows. We'll say that x, it is equal to negative x when x is negative or less than zero, and it is equal to x when x is greater than or equal to zero. Now how do you do these? Well, the first thing you need to do is find the vertex. We're going to get into this a lot more later. This is going to tell you where to separate the equation into pieces. How do you do that? Well, you set whatever is in the absolute value equal to zero. This will be the x value that separates the function into two parts. And then you write it into two parts. One is where the absolute value is positive. And you don't have any change to the function. And then one where the absolute value is negative. Now you're going to multiply this part by negative 1. Let me step through 1. Suppose I have f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1. You need to find out where what is in the middle of this is equal to 0. So x plus 1 equals 0 when x is equal to negative 1. So when x is equal to negative 1, you're going to have a, um, a change in your, your function. It's going to go from negative to positive. This has a positive number out here, so I know it's going to look something like this. So f of x is equal to, and I'm going to do my big curly brackets. Now, when x is less than negative 1, then this is going to equal minus x plus 1. While if x is greater than or equal to negative 1, then it's simply going to equal x plus 1. And you can just leave it like this. So this is how you write it as a piecewise function. What does this graph look like? Well, let's see if I can do this without my ruler. We're going to do a whole bunch more of these later. What if I have something like this? f of x is equal to x plus 1. Well, let's see where it breaks off. I'm going to take what's in the absolute value and set it equal to 0. And the only thing I have in my absolute value is x. So I know when x is equal to 0, that is going to be the vertex. It's going to be where it changes, um, the slope changes direction. So f of x is equal to big curly brackets. So when x is less than 0, then I'm going to put a negative here, negative x plus 1. Now you see the negative only goes to the x. It doesn't go to the plus 1 because the plus 1 in this case is not inside the absolute value. When I guess that should be an x, not a less than. Now, when x is greater than or equal to 0, it's just equal to x plus 1. Let me rewrite this so it's easier to see. It's equal to negative x plus 1 when x is negative, and it's equal to x plus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 0. So when x is 0, this function is 1. It has a slope of 1. So it will look like this. Again, don't worry too much about the graphing. We'll do a lot more of that later.